Today we're going to talk about Post Planner, and Post Planner is a product I love, absolutely love, uh, and it, it, it really makes life a lot easier for a lot of nonprofit marketers in terms of dealing with Facebook. I'm just going to show a few features that I think really set this apart from just simply posting content directly on your Facebook page, because you can do that. But what sets Post Planner apart, a couple features here. One is a queue schedule. So a queue schedule is basically like buffer, where you're coming in here and you're setting up a schedule and you're even determining what type of update will go off at that particular time. So for example, with my Facebook page, Don Hayden Digital Marketing, I have three times, 1020 in the morning, 310 in the afternoon, and then 940 at night. I come in and I change these occasionally as well. And you can see that at 1020 in the morning, I'm not posting text updates. It's mainly links and photos. But at 310, I'm posting status updates, photos, and links. Okay, also at 940 p.m. And so what I do is I, when I post an update, all I have to do is post an update, click on queue. When I do that, it automatically will put it in the queue, similar to how Buffer works. Okay. Uh, the other feature I like here that's relatively new is a Canva feature. And I've mentioned Canva in the past, but Post Planner integrates with Canva. So that means that when you go to post a photo, you can, rather than worrying about creating your own photo and using Photoshop and all this other crazy stuff that you have to do on your desktop, you can simply click on design with Canva. It's going to open up your Canva account, you know, assuming that you're logged in, and then you can simply create a layout. It automatically goes to the Facebook post. You can name it and you can simply pick the uh, post, you can change the text and all that. And then when you click on publish, it's going to post it. The other thing that I like about Post Planner is uh, probably one of the most powerful features is to get trending content and viral photos. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's say that you are busy. Most of you are very, very busy. So what this does is this gives you the ability to go in and search for specific photos. And you can even add, you can create your own folder and you can add your uh, competitors' Facebook pages here, or let's say Facebook pages or organizations that you really look up to, you think that they're really doing really well and they have a high engagement rate, you can simply go and find these pictures. Um, and I will just give you a quick example. I'll just go with awkward family photos for now. Okay, I'm not recommending that you use this on your Facebook page, but just for demonstration purposes, if I pick the Facebook page awkward family photos, what I can do is I can look at the most viral photos from that page. And we could see that this one, Joan Rivers, of course, is the top one that was published five days ago. And then you can look at all of the photos. Once you find a photo that you, that you like uh, or that you think is going to be appropriate, you can simply click on share. And then it automatically creates an update in Post Planner. And then you can, sh you can share that as well. You can also post it into your queue. Now, the last feature I want to show everybody just very, very quickly is the, um, the sharing bar that is included with Post Planner. And what's cool about this is that, uh, and I'll just show you what the share bar looks like. Uh, so a share bar looks like this. This is the share bar. And what's great about it is that when you post updates on Facebook, people click on the link and then they go to your the, to the web page, whatever web page it is, it doesn't really matter. But at the top, there's this bar, and you can do a lot of things in here. So in, in, in my case, I'm just saying, hey, join my email list, okay? Join 23,000 other, other smart marketers, type in your email, subscribe, and then you're good to go, okay? You could also add Twitter, you can add Facebook in here as well. You can even create like a text ad if you wanted to on the right-hand side. So what it does is it puts a sharing bar on articles so that you can either get more followers on Twitter, get more Facebook fans, or get more emails. So that's another powerful feature. That's my quick and dirty demo of Post Planner, just a few of the key features that I find are pretty valuable. Uh, and but, but I have Josh here. So Josh, uh, did you want to uh, say hi to everybody and just introduce yourself? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Good morning from San Francisco. Uh, I'm looking at the sun rising into the fog. Pretty nice out here. So <laughs> greetings from the coast of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, yeah, I'm the founder and chief customer pain killer at Post Planner. Hmm. That is my uh, job is to kill customer pain, and hopefully Post Planner does that. Um, 
yeah, I, we started in a, a in March of 2011. We've been going for about three and a half years, and and just wait till you see see what's coming next because we got a huge update coming in uh, uh, early November. What are some of the things that people are doing right now to that are innovative or creative that are getting a, a you know an unusually high amount of likes, comments, and shares? Well, you know. Uh, it, we're seeing that a lot of our customers are having success doing the same kind of types of things that we're doing on our own fan page, and really what that is is we're we're using our viral photos feature, posting a lot of quotes on uh, images, and um, and and vetting them inside of our inside of our app. So mm -hmm. we'll go into viral photos, we'll we'll uh, look in the awesome quotes folder, mm -hmm. and um, you know grab a a, a quote on a uh, on an image and what that does is it just drives up a lot of engagement uh, a lot of shares and, and, and really uh, cranks up the edge rank on our, on our page or the you know our the new Facebook algorithm mm -hmm. and then once once we get, have that going consistently we you know mix in our posts going back to our website because that's really you know the point that we're on Facebook Facebook mm -hmm. for us is just distribution for our website and so you know it's really that strategy that's working best for us and that we're seeing working very well with um, our customers as well. Again, it's mixing viral photos in and, and, and the cool thing about viral photos is that they're, you know, they're proven, they're scientifically proven to get more engagement because what you're doing is you're sharing uh, images that have already proven themselves to get tons of engagement. And so it's very unlikely that if you share them that they're not going to work well if they've already worked well in other test audiences. Yeah. So, you know, we, we we do that and we share a lot of our blog posts and we we turn that on to evergreen you know that's evergreen content so we turn on the reQ feature ah. and we just continually churn out um you know our our evergreen content into the news feed uh, in between viral photos which drives up you know uh, engagement mm. so it sounds like you guys use the viral photos feature a lot right oh yeah okay now how what are some ways that people so the you know, folks on the uh, mini webinar today, they are working at a nonprofit. What type of advice would you give in terms of the Facebook pages or maybe the sources of viral photos that they that they would be using? Because in this, by default, in the app, you have, you know, awesome quotes, engaging photos, funny photos, crazy photos, beautiful photos, Facebook experts and so forth. You know, obviously, some of these may not apply to, say, an organization deal, dealing with cerebral palsy or... Um, you know, gay rights or something like that. So I see that you can create a new folder, but what sort of advice would you give to a nonprofit what, in terms of the source information, what they might be using? Well, I would start, um, I would start by, you know, posting a few from awesome quotes uh, that, you know, if the, the, the page you mentioned with, you know, about cerebral palsy, you know, that's probably a page where if you in, in, uh, posted inspiring quotes, you know, a quote on, an image that you know inspires people, makes is positive, um, mm -hmm. you know, never give up type stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you, you, they're going to do well, especially if you choose you know the four or five star ones from our from our app. Yeah. So that's the first thing, and then you know beyond that, I would take I would create a folder, and you since you are in your sector and you're kind of an expert in your domain, mm -hmm. then you're going to know at least five, six, ten, twenty Facebook pages that are doing things, you know well and that doing things in a way that you would like to do them as well. Mm -hmm. So I take those pages and put them into a folder, just create your own folder, put all those pages into a folder, and then at any time you can go back and you can see what's working for those pages. Mm -hmm. And you know, viral photos isn't just for finding photos and posting them, it's also for doing research. So mm -hmm. you want to go in there and you want to see what's working for other pages, even if you're not going to share those photos, you're getting data about what, you know, what's going to work. Yeah. So, you know, one, one person who's really killing it with our app is Kim Garst. Um, she runs Boom Social. And what she does, uh, if you just follow in her, any of her pages, is she, she finds awesome photos in our, you know, super engaging, super viral photos in our app. And then what she does is she creates her own uh, images with similar content. So if she sees that a, that a post that, like, right there, you know, think you can – think you can always don't let fear tell you any differently um, my guess is Kim probably saw that on a, a viral photo in in uh, post planner and you know 
gleaned from the success of that post that if she put that same quote onto her own image and put her brand on it and her logo, which is down there in the right hand corner, then you know what's driving what was probably driving that engagement on that original photo was the 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 quote itself. Huh. So she's just taking that quote, throwing it on her own image, put her brand on there, and you know she and you can see that she's just been killing it with all her posts, tons of likes, tons of shares. Uh, she gets a, a, an amazing amount of reach, so hmm. um, that's one thing you can definitely do. Yeah, it looks like she uses something like Canva. Unless she, this could mm -hmm. be either Canva or a, just a simple Photoshop template that she drops a photo in, puts the quote in. It's some, you know, that it's pretty straightforward what she's doing, which is great. Yeah, you know, pretty easy. And I like how you mentioned the uh, the viral photos. You know, so she's basically using that as a research tool to to not necessarily repost or share the photo directly from Post Planner, although you can do that, but to take the photo and kind of make it her own or take the quote and make it her own, you know? Exactly. Um, and, and another uh, feature that, that, uh, that we didn't really talk about, but I think is, is kind of important, in addition to viral photos, there's this area called trending content. What I like about this is that you can actually search by keywords. So earlier, just, for, you know, while we were talking, I, uh, looked at the keyword cancer and you I can see very quickly most popular right trending by cancer okay or meaning that's the trending photo or trending topic or trending update within the topic of of the you know cancer obviously it can be more specific and then we could see what's performing really well so as you said doing the research is really going to be the key here you know this is really a research vehicle rather than mm -hmm. just just only content curation. It's not about finding stuff and then sharing it on your page. It's about finding what is trending on Facebook particularly. Yep. You know? um, so uh, did you want to add anything else, Josh, before I open it for questions? I see a couple of questions here. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we, we pretty much covered it all. Uh, I do have a little... Um, uh, surprise about what's coming soon. Oh, great. And that is we're going to be adding, You, everyone's probably noticed, anyone who's been on Facebook in the last month or so has noticed that videos are getting tons yeah. of uh, reach lately. You know, you can't really open the news feed and not see a video. Mm -hmm. So um, very soon, in like in the, within the next week or so, we're going we're gonna to be adding uh, video to viral photos um, in beta. Hmm. Just, just to test it. So along with all those photos that you see uh, with ratings, with star ratings, hmm. uh, you're also going to see videos, and you'll be wow. able to reshare those as well. Wow, that's really cool. Now, so you're sharing the videos, but you won't be able to, you know how with viral photos, you, mm -hmm. there's the choice of either sharing the photo as your page or as, mm -hmm. you know, just doing a reshare or posting it as your page. See how it says? Yeah, uh, you'll be able to do the same. Oh, videos. really? Wow, that's amazing, huh? So we'll actually upload the video to your page in a sense, right? Yep. Wow, that's going to that's gonna be pretty cool. Um, so I have a question here from uh, Ella, and I just have one question. So guys, this is a good opportunity. Josh is a smart guy. He's, he sees a lot of really interesting and creative stuff going on with Facebook. So now is the time to ask a question if you have one. Um, Ella says, should you just share the photo or should you make a comment on why you're sharing? What do you think about that, Josh? Well, that's a that's a really good question. Um, I, I guess it just depends. Uh, you, if your goal is to you know get a lot of shares and, and get a lot of, of engagement, then you know adding a, 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 a caption to the photo might help. But mm -hmm. you know I think what really drives a lot of it is is that is the image itself because you know you got to kind of put yourself into the mind of the person who's going to share. Hmm. Um, you know, when, when you're posting on Facebook, you're really trying to post stuff that other people are going to share, and, and you have to think about why people share things. And, you know, I think one of the main reasons people share things is because they want to express something, they want to demonstrate something about who they are. And, you know, so if someone shares an image, they're probably going to share that image with the idea that that's going to go out and their, their friends are going to see the image itself. They, they're probably not going to see the, the caption that goes with it. So I would say, you know, in general, it's it's the content of the image that mm -hmm. is probably drives the most engagement, not so much the caption. Yeah. But um, you know, it, you, you never know. Some, maybe sometimes a caption does really drive a lot. I know that um, uh, a guy who's working with us as well, 
Uh, he he has one of the most shared images of all time. His name is Bryant McGill. Hmm. Um, he does a he does a page called Simple Reminders, hmm. and he has a he has an image that has been shared like I think eight hundred thousand times. Oh, really? And um, it that that um, I don't think that's the is that yeah that's the one is right there. One? Really? Huh. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And he ha he has an image there that has been shared eight hundred thousand times, and that. That image has a really cool quote on it. It's, hmm. uh, it's an interesting. It's actually kind of a darker quote about something kind of darker in life. Hmm. Like he, along with that image, he wrote a, a status update. You know, a caption that is you know probably a, you know like it's almost like a blog post you know, hmm. in length. So hmm. it, it's it's twenty paragraphs of, of text. Whoa! And you know, I'm pretty sure that that had something to do with the fact that this, this thing has been shared so many times. Yeah. Um, so, you, you know, if, if um, the, 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 the short answer is, I don't know, <laughs> yep, yep. but the, you know, my, my idea is that it depends on the content of the, of the picture. If it's just a beautiful uh, landscape, then maybe a, a caption is going to do work. If you're asking people to, to caption it as a, ca as a caption contest, hmm. but it just depends on the content of the image. Yeah, that's great. The other thing that um, that's, I think it's really critical is mobile, right? So most Facebook users are now accessing Facebook from a mobile device, and that is going to become more and more the case. And with a lot of text in a caption, it, um, it kind of pushes the photo down on a smartphone. You know, so in other words, I, I always think it's better to, if you're going to write a caption, keep it super short, one sentence. Obviously, there are the outliers, like you said, with uh, simple reminders, you know, so they have like a paragraphs and paragraphs. And I know that Mari Smith is also another one who will write an, a text update that is, you know, a, you know, a blog post, basically. But it's so right on and it's so filled with so many resources. It's so useful. That tends to, that's what really drives the engagement is the post itself just is the it's almost like a go to source on um a specific topic, you know, she'll, she'll post an update on, on, uh, how Facebook is changing their newsfeed algorithm, you know, news about the newsfeed algorithm. So she'll post something about that in a text update and it will have everything, literally everything you need, including links to other articles that will be shared simply because it is that, um, you know, it's like, uh, it's, it's so useful, you know, as an update. Um, now Jane is saying, uh, Jane, Jane Cross is, oh, wow, already jazz post planner is new to me. Thanks, Josh. And jo thanks, John and Josh. And, uh, okay. Uh, another question here from Brenda. Are there no issues with, wait, are there no issues with resharing content that we're not creating? Should we be noting where the image video, et cetera, came from? to cover ourselves. So this gets into, this is a good question actually, it gets into attribution. And do you, do you kind of run into that issue with clients? Have you had that question before, Josh? About attribution, if you find a picture? Oh, really... What's that? Josh? Yeah, can, can you hear me, John? Yeah, I can hear you now, yep. Sorry, I, I, I actually, everything you just said cut out, so maybe you can just. Oh. Uh, say a shorter version of it real quick. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. When someone finds a photo, say in viral photos, what, um, I, mm -hmm. the question is, you know, should you be noting where the image or video came from? Like assigning attributes. You know, that's, uh, that's ultimately, yeah, that's ultimately up to you. Uh, you know, we just recommend that you do everything you can to not co violate any copyright laws. So, but we ultimately leave it up to you. If you do share it um, as the other, uh, pages photo, you know, if you basically reshare it, then you know I don't think you have to worry about anything because you're just literally resharing their post. Yeah. But if you do post as a timeline, and, and you know, as you can see that that's the default with Post Planner, um, that's the default mode. But if you do decide to post it as your own timeline photo, if you click that right there, go ahead and do that. You'll see that we also put an attribution there, found mm -hmm. at, and with a short link to that fan page. Mm -hmm. um, so you can either leave that, you know, that will that will if you, if you think that's uh, good enough for you, you can leave that. You don't have to. Um, I recommend that you do, uh, but you know, it's it's ultimately it's up to you. 
Okay, beautiful. Excellent question. Uh, okay, uh, excellent question and answer. Thank you. Uh, Avi is asking, Josh, is the quote, um, if the quote is translated into another language, does it have the same impact and response? I don't know. That's a good question. I'm going to, he's at, Avi's asking, you know, if you find a really great quote and you translate it into another language, is that going to be as effective? You know, that's a great question. It's, that's a question really about, uh, you know, the cross-cultural, um, you know, things being able to go across cultures and, and you'll know if, if you're, you know, if, it, if you're translated into your language, then you obviously know your culture well. Um, you know, a, a quote, for example, a quote that drives a lot of engagement in the Anglo world, you know, in the United States and England, that, that quote, you know, about being individualistic and self-reliant, that might not work in a culture where, you know, individualism and self-reliance isn't uh, as important. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, some Eastern countries like, uh, like, like Japan, Japan or, yeah. or Korea, right? Mm -hmm. So they're, they're going to have different cultural values and, and maybe quotes all about success, the individual success of you know, individuals isn't going to, um, that's just one example, but it mm. isn't going to work as well in that culture. Yeah. So if you speak the language and you're, and you're translating an English text um, into, you know, say you're Brazilian and you're translating it into Portuguese, then you and you're Brazilian, you probably have a good idea about whether that's going to you know, have some resonance in your own culture. So I just mm -hmm. think about it that way. Got it. Okay. Um, Allison is asking another question. I could probably answer this. She says, this is embarrassingly basic, but is sharing of my content on a business page I don't manage allowed? Yes, that is definitely allowed. Um, but if you share it as your, if you share it as yourself, the only people that are going to see that are your friends. If you share it as your page, um, in fact, I don't think you could post to another page as a page. You can comment, like, and share other content on another page as your page, but you can't post as another page on another Facebook page. Okay. Um, and I think you can, but you, it's, not, it's not really going to do much for you, in my opinion. You, I think you can post, you know, a, 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 you can't post with Post Planner or apps. Hmm. Um, that would be major spammy. But you can, you know, use Facebook as your page and go and, and leave an update on another page. Yeah, uh, I, that's you can do it, but I don't. I don't think it's going to drive a lot. Do have a lot of results for you. You're right. You're right. Um, Avi has another question here. Who owns the intellectual property of these photos and quotes? Good question. I. It's a case. I'm going to answer that. It's case by case. I think. Right. In terms of owning yeah, the intellectual it's case property. By case. Yeah, you know, a lot of these. A lot of these images have been already been reshared. Someone found it somewhere. You know, like some of these e cards, for example. Uh, with funny, you know, funny sayings on them with pictures. They've been, they, they were created so long ago and reach, have been reshared by so many, um, you know, pages and social media accounts that no one really knows who owns them anymore. Mm. Um, but that's, that's one extreme. On the other extreme is someone, a, a professional photographer who's sharing their, you know, uh, their, their, their life's work um, on their page. Mm. Um, you just got to take it on a case by case basis and, and, you know, yeah, some people were asking about Mari Smith. So this is Mari Smith, just because a couple of people said, who's Mari Smith? Who's that person that posted the really long text update? So I'm just showing this page right here. Um, <clears throat> and I think that's the last question. I don't see any other questions. Let me see here. Josh, this has been really helpful. Um, everybody, I'm going to uh, edit this. I'll post it on the YouTube channel on Friday, and then I'll send an email on Monday about it. Uh, but Josh, I wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your day, especially early in the morning, to come and, and talk with the group here. Hey, it's my pleasure, John. Thanks for having me. I can come back anytime. Okay, great. All right, so I'll see you next week then. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so listen, everybody have a great week and enjoy the weekend, and we will talk to you very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.